What's going on, guys, and welcome back to the show. After School with the Lawsons, we're all the way down south here in Sarasota with a very special guest, Miss Tanya Lee Davis. Hello, Thanks for joining me. Oh, well, thank you for flying all this way to come see me. <laughs> yes, it was such a, uh, you know, flying's never fun, but it's when you get to your destina- destination, your destination, you like, you get to meet all these cool people, yep, you know? Yep, yep. It's like uh, a pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. Yeah. Sarasota is beautiful. You're beautiful. And I'm so excited to, uh, you know, let the guests hear more about you. And I'm, I know we hung out yesterday, yes, you know, and, and, and like usual, there's a lot of questions I ask when we hang out. And I'm probably going to ask the same ones today. Okay. But, okay. Um, but Tanya Lee, thank you so much. And who is Tanya Lee Davis? Well, I mean, I'm a force to be reckoned with. I've been underestimated my entire life, and I I, I like to prove people wrong. Yeah. Uh, I just turned 53 uh, November 27th of 2023, and I feel like I'm in my prime. You and know, it, you know I, I don't know what it is about you, but I've seen older videos of you. And it looks like you're just getting younger as as time goes on. Oh, okay. And everything else is dropping the gravity. I've got the neck flap going on. I got bingo wings. You look but yeah, good. I, you know, I did lose some weight. Yeah. And I, but I'm going on natural. I mean, you know, I think it's just, uh, you know, it's your energy as well. Um, I feel like I'm in the pocket right now in yeah. my life. Like I feel like the universe is finally all coming together, all the puzzle pieces. You know, I think that's the way I, I look at, at life in general is puzzle pieces. And, and as you get older, you can self-reflect and you see the puzzle all coming together and you're like, wow, all right, I went through all these troublesome times, but what an amazing picture I yeah. have at the end of this. And uh, What a heck of a story, right? Yeah, yeah, and hopefully it's not the end. I'm hoping my, my picture, you know, my puzzle is, is a lot longer. But, uh, yeah, it's, you know, I, that's why I think right now uh, – um, my energy level because I'm putting it out there because I believe that my, I found my purpose. Right. And uh, when you find your purpose and when you're secure with yourself, it doesn't matter what other people are doing and what they say about you yeah. or whatever, the negativity that comes along with all of this hoopla we yeah. call uh, social media and, and fame or notoriety. Um, you know, you have to be grounded and secure with yourself to be able to handle it. And right now I'm like, I can handle this. You're like, let's this. go. Let's put this yep. bad boy in four wheel drive and let's bring it on. You Boom. Know? Take uh, well, as you guys can tell, we're not in uh, the usual podcast studio. Tanya Lee was, you know, thankfully she found us a place to be able to record. So tell, where well, are we at? So I have a form of dwarfism. Uh, and uh, most little people were told that probably not uh, chiropractors were probably not a good thing. But uh, as I'm getting older, I have skeletal dysplasia, which means, you know, your bone deformity per se. Um, and so I've been going to a chiropractor since 2020. And uh, I moved to this area, Sarasota, and I happen to be scooting by and I'm like, I see a chiropractor, so I'm like, what are the odds that it's literally around the corner from my house? So I zipped in, talked to Dr. Alex, and said, uh, you know, here, here's my situation. And so I, I literally come once a week. He's got this little interceptor thing, activators. They, it's non-invasive. And Have um, you ever been to one before? Is this the first time? Oh, no, no. Uh, this is my third different chiropractor gotcha. since 2020. I have... I have to say, unfortunately, nobody's going to top Dr. Jill up in Inverness, Florida. Dr. Jill Smith, she's my OG. But awesome. um, uh, yeah, Dr. Alex is phenomenal. And yeah. Uh, yeah. super nice place. And yeah, and thankfully he, able to be able to have somewhere to record, too. Yeah. And he started his own podcast or he's starting his own podcast. Cool. So this is the room that we uh, he's the last yep. to use. So. And as you guys can tell, uh, my shirt may look a little wet. You know, um, it is a little toasty in here. I have a, a that effect on me. <laughs> she does have that effect. But. But, you know, contrary to what most people think, Tanya Lee, I think I look better wet. Oh. So as the show goes on and I get sweatier and sweatier, I'm just going to get sexier and sexier. I'm menopausal, <laughs> so getting wet these days is out of my wheelhouse, unfortunately. Oh, uh, my goodness. I love it. Um, well, anyways, um, have you ever thought about, and you you may already have, have you ever thought about a book? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, you know. My entire life story is what I talk about on stage. So, yes, eventually, I've just, I've gotten a lot, you know, like I'm a one man band right now. Yeah. I, you know, I'm doing everything, including my social media and, and tour schedules and stuff. So, it's, uh, my husband and I finally have a place to live for at least the next year. So, that's, that's, uh, that gives that's us great. the security. So, um, yeah getting my ducks in a row kind mm-hmm. of thing. And uh, Kevin came up with a great title for our love story. It's going to be called Her Beauty is Shin Deep. <laughs> 
instead of her beauty is skin deep. Yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah. That's, I love uh, it. It's great. There's so much to cover today, and I, and I wish I wish we had days to do it. Um, but I'm going to just get to the most important things. Mm -hmm. And if people don't know, uh, Tanya Lee Davis is a well-known comedian. She's been all over the world. And uh, I want to hear more about that. So when did you even start uh, being a comedian? Well, I grew up uh, in Canada, and so we didn't have iPads or tablets back then. We had the television, <laughs> so that's I grew up watching American yeah. television awesome. and British comedies because uh, Canada has a lot of British inf influence. So I watched Laurel and Hardy, and and then um, Carol Burnett, the Lucille Ball. Yes. You know the physical comedians. So I didn't. I, so from a young age, I had a a um, like a magnetic board uh, or a marker board in my bedroom, and I would put my name with a star, and I just knew I wanted to perform, but I I didn't know that a stand-up comedy type of thing even existed. So I started doing children's theater uh, out of university, and I got the lead in the first production I ever Ooh. auditioned for. I was Perry the Penguin. <laughs> I had the walk down and uh, I started dating a guy in the production. Uh, he played the villain and apparently he had a thing for penguins. Boom. And uh, one night he said, I'm going down to a comedy club to do an open mic. Do you want to come check me out? And first time ever, uh, my home city of Winnipeg, Manitoba, Canada. i never been to a comedy club before. So I'm, I'm, I'm back, back, the back of the room watching these people just get up and perform. And I was like, oh my gosh, you just get up there and do your thing. And I was like, I can do that. And then I watched the guy that I was with and I was like, he is terrible. <laughs> and instinctively I knew what he was doing wrong. Yeah. So when he got off stage, I was energized. Like I was like, oh my gosh. And I was like, you're a shit. And he's like, <laughs> thanks. You think you can do better? And At I was least like, you were honest with him, right? Yeah. yeah. He's like, you think you can do better? And I was like, me? So um, uh, three months into it, I started getting paid. Four months into it, he dumped That's me. Amazing. Couldn't handle the competition. Oh. Turns out he started dating a seal. He skipped uh, from the penguins to the seals. Yeah, huh? but I, actually, I'll tell you a great story about uh, the first time I ever went on stage. Um, and I just started talking about this on stage. So my first time at the comedy club, so after that, my first going there, they called me and said, you know, you're going to be going up on uh, whatever night of the week it was. Do you have any special requirements? And I said, well, I'll probably need a chair to stand on. Back in the day, I was more agile, so I could get up on a chair and I would stand on it and lean against the back of the chair. It would take a lot of pressure off my back. So I show up at the comedy club, my second time ever at this comedy club, any comedy club, my first time performing, and the managers come over and say, the headliner's really upset you're here. And I'm like, okay, first of all, how does the headliner even know who I am? Like, and why, I'm, I'm an open mic, this is my first time on stage, yeah. why is he even, or he, she even threatened by me? You know, and it, it was like, oh, I don't understand. So this is, I, looking back once again, perspective, I, I've, I see there's certain pivotal parts and points in my life where I'm, I come across these situations and something snaps in my brain yeah. and I go, oh, I'll show you, right? So I may, if not, if that situation may not have happened, gone up and maybe fumbled. I went up there with, I don't know what's happening. I don't, but you're, I'm going to go up there and kick some ass. Yeah. And I went up there and I did really, really well the first time up. And I, I think it's because I just was like, ah. And I, still trying to figure out why this, why are you trying to sabotage me? Mm -hmm. Like it didn't make any sense to me. It's my first time. Anyway, so I sat at the back of the room for the rest of the show, watched the other comedians. Then the headliner gets up there. And it all made sense. He was five foot two inches tall. His entire act was about his height. Oh, when you got to follow a midget, yeah. your short, jo short jokes mean shit, <laughs> yeah. right? So that was it. And oh uh, he has named Kerry Tomlich. And he, uh, he basically, like, refused to work with me and kind of sabotaged me at many comedy clubs because he would never want to be on the same lineup. And because it's a boys club and yeah. stuff, he was really infiltrated. So there, he really messed up my career for a long time. Yeah, he's dead now. Oh, uh, sure well, that's good, I guess. Yeah. I mean, good for you, right? <laughs> Uh, but anyway, that's one. That's one of those situations yeah. where it's like I will, I will show you, I will prove you wrong. It's a good mo motivation in life. Yeah, I think. You're, you are so powerful. Uh, I was telling uh, my mom whenever I got here, I was just like, you're you're such a powerful woman, and you have, you know, you you have the unstoppable me, which I, I definitely want to talk about too. But um, there's just a precedence about you that it's not that 
it, it's just the comedian. You know, you're so funny too, which makes it even better. But you have this precedence that you're just like a strong. You are so independent, and um, it, it's amazing. And it's a it's a it's a really great story, and it's motivational to me as well. You know, wow. and um, it's just. It's crazy everything that you've been through that we've talked about and then seeing where you're headed and what you're, I mean, you got great things ahead of you. I do. I do. I'm looking forward to it because we've been through the ringer. I've worked hard. I mean, yeah. uh, January 23rd, just a couple of days ago, was my 34th year anniversary well, congratulations. in comedy. So, I mean, three decades plus decades in, in any job yeah. is, is great. And then to, but to be able to travel around the world and have all these amazing adventures and now to be able to talk about it on stage in, and the reason why I, I guess I exist whatever you were mentioning is is because I'm I like I said I'm comfortable with who I am I have achieved I I have led the foundations and the stepping stones to where I am right now mm. and I talk to people online I go listen you if you want to troll me what you can't tear me down if you never brought me up yeah I have receipts on everything that I've done and so that gives me confidence yeah and I don't need to be worrying about what other people are doing or other people's opinion of me that doesn't matter to me right and it's none of my business what your opinion of me is and I'm gonna wake up tomorrow and not even thinking about you, you know, yeah. and just as long as I'm moving forward in my career, that's, you know, and I've got the good people around me that support me and that's build the me up. That's the most important. That's it. You got to, as you get older, your social circle gets smaller Yeah. and I'm fine with that. And I, that's where that confidence comes from. And therefore, and also, you know, as you get older, you gain wisdom. I've been in the business a long time, so I'm mentoring. I'm I'm comedy Yoda uh, for a bunch of other comedians, and so I'm giving back in that regard. Yeah. Uh, and then my social media, like the Unstoppable Me, I don't make a lot of money on social media. Um, I'm there because I want to be there. I feel like my my Unstoppable Me message is for everybody, and it's much needed now. This because of my age, and I'm a Gen Xer. I'm not, a, I don't have that victim mentality, yeah. right? I've had that victim mentality, you know, but I, I now see it. And now it seems like uh, our younger people, a lot of them have it. Yeah, right? Oh yeah, for They're, sure. Everybody's putting themselves in a box. Well, yeah. I can't do this. I'm disabled. I can't do that. I'm handicapped in this and that. And it's like, okay, if you set your mind to it, if you believe it, you can achieve it. Mm -hmm. You are limiting your own ability by saying you can't. How about just try it to your own ability and you'll be surprised at what you can accomplish. And that's one thing that I just, I, it, no matter, you control me online, all you want, you don't have to think I'm funny, but if you don't agree with this unstoppable me message, you are hurting yourself yeah. because the, it is a mindset. It's, it's stop putting, you know, your race, your color, your gender, your religion, your height, your weight, your color, none of that matters. Yeah. It's about working on yourself. The shell, the exterior 100%. of you, mm -hmm. you know, is going to fade or you're going to plump it up and tuck it up and stretch it out until it looks like some sort of weird skin, <laughs> you know, some, but that's what people are doing. It's still not going to fix what's in the yeah. inside and in your head. And that's, I think we need to really focus more on that. And it's term mental health, like that, you know, every, there's a label for everything now it, but you know, we all have mental health, good yeah. or bad, but stop labeling and just work on yourself. Find your inner zhuzh, your yeah. warm fuzzies. Once you latch on to what gives you those warm fuzzies, you pursue that. Yeah. And then the people will see you in your good light. Mm -hmm. And then they'll be attracted to you like a moth to the flame. Like attracts like. Yeah. There you um, go. And, and, that's, and that's why I do what I do. Um, I don't know what's came over me within the past you know, um, a couple of years. And it may have been the fact that my daughter was born, you know, and she's two. And I still, to this day, don't know what that is, but something has happened that has came over me and just, I want to be that helping hand. I want to be that person that people can lean on or people can talk to, or, Hey, let me help you out. You know, I've seen a lot, I've been through a lot, and I just want to be there for that next person who's doing the same thing. You know, I don't want to watch somebody burn. I, I want to be there with a bucket of water to help put out that fire. You know what yeah. I mean? Well, it's called getting older. I mean, like I said, it's self-reflected. I've you, heard that as well, you too. Wanna, you want to you wanna give back. Yeah. You want to you wanna leave a bit of a legacy. Yeah. You want to believe that when we all have an expiration date, that's why it's important to live every day to its fullest. And I've done that, once again, my entire life. If I die tomorrow, I gave it hell, yeah. you know, and I've done what I could. But I also know that I can leave or, you know, that, I, that I've 
I've also tried to impart wisdom and knowledge and help, uh, you know, uh, to other people. So, I love it. You know. Well, I was uh, looking on your Instagram the other day. Mm -hmm. And uh, so when was your anniversary again? Uh, January 23rd. So Tuesday. We're oh, so Thursday. Tuesday. Yeah. So in whenever I saw that, you were in Texas. Yeah. Tell me about Texas. What was you doing in Texas? Because I saw a picture of you and Bobby Lee. Yes. That's so awesome. uh, I had... Uh, Right. You know, at my age, I mean, you know, it's difficult. And even though I have a huge profile, I'm still having difficulty getting into the mainstream comedy clubs because, you, you know, you, without an agent and then not on television. So I'm booking theaters. Uh, so um, I support act David Westgate and I we did the Beltonian Theater in Belton, Texas, and we did the Mineola Theater in his uh, in uh, Mineola, Texas. OK. And uh, Historic Select Theater in Mineola, Texas. And it was lovely uh, in the middle of nowhere. So we had those two theaters theater dates and I've never really spent any time in Austin, Texas and it's sort of a comedy mecca right now uh, because Joe Rogan is based out of there with his uh, JRE, Joe Rogan Experience, plus he opened a comedy club called right, the right, right. Comedy Mothership and I've they fill, yeah, they also film the Kill Tony podcast which is huge amongst the comedy in the, in the comedy world these days. So uh, I decided, I said to David, any chance you know we want to st stick around for a couple of Days and try to network and see yeah absolutely so we went down on the monday night which is like potluck you sign up for uh hundreds of comedians line up you sign up for three minutes for an open mic uh they take all the names and then they draw only 16 names and you get three minutes i'm a storyteller i can't talk for that you know <laughs> yeah, there's no way yeah so i was like ah, if i don't get on it that's fine i didn't get picked for the open mic but then you line up and for the kill tony podcast and they only think pick six people out of that and there were hundreds oh, and man. hundreds of comedians. And um, I didn't get picked for that either, which I guess is a blessing because it's kind of a roast. Like the panel, they want to go out. They want to find a diamond in the rough, but they like to roast the comedians. Yeah. And, you know, I can think because, you know, I'm not, A, I'm not a roaster. I don't, you know, that's not my style. But, I feel like you could give it back to him. Oh, though. I could. <laughs> yeah, a couple of zingers. But, yeah. you know, that's not my style right, per right. se is where I showcase. So, um, you know, but it was, I got to uh, just being around a whole shit ton of comedians. Mm -hmm. uh, I remember the great and the bad about all that, you know, the the kind of, you know, people, you have a conversation with somebody and they're just talking at you. Oh. It's not a two-way conversation yeah. because, you know, they want to just, they, so I'm recognizable and stuff. And then they want to tell me all their credits and stuff like that. And I'm trying, I try to interject and yeah. they're like, Rah. I'm like, Oh, okay. Now I remember why, <laughs> <laughs> you know? Um, but, uh, yeah, it was a really cool experience That's and awesome. Austin's neat. And I, I hope to get back in there, uh, doing some shows. And then I ran in outside Bobby Lee and Bert Kreischer were both a part of the panel for the kill Tony yeah. episode. Plus Bobby had filmed, uh, the Joe Rogan experience. Yeah, I've seen, I seen he was filming that, yeah. So David had said to me, oh, they're probably going to go out the back or so. I said, not Bobby Lee. <laughs> so we went and grabbed a slice of pizza. And as we came back on the sidewalk, all of a sudden I saw this like little, uh, you know, beanie come out, this orange beanie. And and, and you, you know, knew. I was like, Bobby kind of looks homeless. And he comes running out and I, everybody's, you know, pictures, pictures, pictures. Yeah. So I was like, ah, I'm on my scooter and I'm like, Zing! <laughs> I like bared down and people are flying and I just went up and I stuck my hand right up his ass crack and I just was like fingers right up the crack and I grabbed it and that's why if you look at the video he went like this kind of like uh and then he was took a second he went oh my god Tanya you know and, I love uh, it yeah because so, uh, on yours you probably got like all four of them oh I can yeah I can, <laughs> right up there yeah I love it how, how big is the comedy mothers I've never even I, seen we don't we weren't allowed in oh we wow. were actually in a building yeah gotcha. they don't let you in it's completely sold out months in advance so is there like um you said there's like hundreds of comedians is is the comedian world growing is that something that is growing uh from you know whenever you first were in it to now probably i would say just because of social media oh, yeah, you know yeah. because uh, people want that instant fame too mm. so you know uh back in the day oh you, you're funny you should be a comedian you know yeah. a guy or a gal would be funny amongst their friends so oh, you try to co do comedy well it's not as easy as it looks but now with social media and stuff you could put out 
you know, a 10, 15, 30 second video that can be very funny and appealing, but that doesn't mean you're a, a stand-up comedian. Right. You couldn't go up on stage now for minimum 45 minutes yeah. as a headliner, but some people get this instant fame quite early on in their career, but they don't have enough foundation underneath them. So, you know, it's, it's, there's a fine line. Like I tell my guys, you know, you, you want to get your self in the best position right now and, and and before you put stuff out there yeah. um uh because you know it's out there and uh you know you want to show off your best light do you feel that uh, is it a boy's world or a girl's world in the in the comedy world it's definitely male dominated. It really? always has been. I'm, I'm sure there's now, uh, you know, a definitely more influx of female comedians, and also because of the culture right now, yeah, it's they're pushing a lot more female comedians and all inclusive or you know uh, uh, other diversities, if we will. We can't list them all off, yeah. You know, to put them in because everybody wants to be all inclusive, mm. you know. And it's like, okay, I mean, not it, nowadays. It doesn't seem like. It's necessarily about the funny, right? You know, uh, which is a shame. Uh, they're just really trying to back people to make you know, you know, put them in. Is it a territorial world? You know, well, comedians. Yeah, I mean, in the entertainment business, right? That's why I moved from Canada down to Los Angeles. And at first, I was like, oh, this is so cool, L.A. I mean, right, super, yeah. you know, American. That was my first big, huge American city. Moving from Canada, wow, very ethnically diverse and stuff, and. Uh, but after about the first year, you're, you're kind of like, I just am I going to meet anybody that's authentic? Because everybody oh, was yeah. always like, hey, hey, nice to meet you. What can you do for me? Oh, you gotcha. You know, that sort of attitude. You never felt like you really could connect. Almost with like they were using you. Oh, yeah. Very, and very transient. That's so crazy. people were in and out. And, oh, yeah, that's the entertainment business. And I've always led my career, and I, you know, I, to try to help people believe that there was a purpose and a place for me in the entertainment business. So I didn't ever try to squash anybody or try to you know climb on somebody else to get to the next rung i just believe and i tell my guys this you know just stay within your you know in your own head and be like for john believe that what you got is going to be unique enough and if it's your time it's your time and don't worry about you know somebody that's come up underneath you that's now a, you know jumped about you know i've some people that started comedy way after me are, are selling out arenas and stuff like that and i'm fine with that yeah you know but of course people on the internet blah, 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 i've never heard of you i'm like i that's okay. You've never heard of me. I've done amazing things yeah. and someday you will. Yeah. So what is the craziest place you've ever performed? Like, uh, as far as like beautiful, the crowd is, you know, in it, you know, and like, you can just tell everybody's having a good time. Like where's your most memorable, uh, onstage moment? Well, I mean, I've had many, uh, good, you know, like, so the biggest show I've ever done was live at the Apollo from London. Okay. The London Apollo is, you know, that's the biggest TV show over there. It was in front of 4,000 people. Wow. It wasn't the most, uh, amazing, like TV comedy is not great in big theaters. You know, uh, they've been sitting there all day, you know, they get hyped up. But what I tell my guy, anybody, when you're doing television, you play to the camera, like you're killing it because they'll just boost the audio up anyway, even if you die on oh, your ass. Gotcha. You know, they had a comedian that absolutely died. Like, he was getting booed. But then you watch the television version. And they were and they, like, yeah. Yeah, exactly. I mean, that's it's all. That's crazy. I did not know mirrors. that. Oh, yeah. So you just play like you're just killing it. Um, I've done, early on in my career, I got booked in the Cayman Islands for two weeks. Ooh. So, I mean, every day. And I was the opening act, so I had to do 20 minutes. But I got to spend two weeks on the Cayman Islands snorkeling and scuba diving and parasailing, doing all this stuff. So that was amazing. Um, I got to do a show in a castle on oh. top of a cliff in the city of Lobania, Slovenia. Wow. Where's, Where yeah. is that? So Italy and Venice. <laughs> okay. We flew into Venice, and then we kind of drove around. Around, I guess it's the Mediterranean or whatever that. I bet it's of. beautiful over there. Oh, absolutely stunning! You know, and it was 500 people sitting there. We were on this big, huge stage. It was for a festival. It was it was spectacular. You know, uh, I've done shows in Japan on uh, marine bases. I did seven bases in ten days. Uh, Okinawa, Japan. Oh wow! Um, I uh, Australia. I've done. How, how do they t take to like the American comedy? Well, I perform to U.S. Marines. Oh, gotcha. Yeah. Okay. So they were loving it. Yeah. You know, um, and, you know, they're just happy to have a good time and, and uh, be, you know, 
uh, enjoyed that the fact that they've got people coming out to entertain them. Uh, so that was a great experience. Uh, I did um, Abu Dhabi in Dubai. Oh, but that's beautiful uh, there too. So, yeah, very cool. And, you know, uh, desert and really interesting. I mean, obviously, as a little person driving around, and that time I had ginger hair. So a ginger dwarf traveling in a scooter <laughs> around, uh, you know, with uh, all these Middle Eastern people and the sheiks, with, they call them sheiks, uh, with the white, you know, robes and stuff like that, looking at me and, you know, uh, I... But yeah, I was. You got women wearing g strings and are topless on, or like you know, pasties on the beach with women with like the full burqa bathing suits. Oh no! It's a really interesting. I'd rather you know, be dichotomy. the. I'd I'd put the g string on to yeah. be honest with you. I, can, I only imagine. <laughs> uh, what is um? You just, so you were talking about you were in the Cayman Islands and you went snorkeling. You just went snorkeling too, right? Uh, I went scuba diving. Or scuba diving, yeah. Yes. So what was that? Okay, so um, I've been scuba diving in four different countries. The Cayman Islands was the first time. Uh, I went at uh, Turkey and the Philippines. I took my husband. And just recently, this past December, my cousin came to visit from Canada, and one of my fans on TikTok, uh, scuba diving with Skip, he um, had been messaging me and said, if you ever want to go diving, and I was like, uh, you know, absolutely. That'd be so fun. So when my cousin was coming out, I was thinking about things to do, and I happened to be doing a show in Fort Pierce, Florida, so it's only an hour and a half north of Fort Lauderdale, so I said to Skip, any chance, you know, we can throw this together. Anyway, didn't think I would enjoy the Atlantic Ocean, because I've been, you know, scuba diving and coral reefs and stuff like that, but I had no idea that there's actually a coral reef from Fort Lauderdale down through the uh, wow. Florida Keys. And so there's a big ridge. And uh, also the first dive we went on was a shipwreck dive. I got to go inside a tugboat. I posted a video about it. I, and I can't like swim when I've got all the gear on. So I, I literally have to have my own person that just holds my tank and just guides me around. Gotcha. And I had Stephanie and uh, she was fabulous. And she took me inside the tugboat and I was like, this is so cool. The first awesome. fish I saw was a 600 pound Goliath grouper. <laughs> I was like, oh, it was like I was Mo Moby Dick in the, you know, like, yeah, I was, say, I was, it was like, probably ah. like, it was probably I, and you're like, mm. yeah, a little bait. Oh my um, goodness. So, yeah, it was phenomenal. Um, so, we did that trip. So, now what we've decided is because I love to scuba dive, um, and a lot of people, it's on their bucket list. So, we've actually, July 8th through the 15th, if you, the Unstoppable Me scuba diving trip with me That's awesome. uh, out of Fort Lauderdale, Florida, I'm offering a deal for my fans. You get a thousand. For a thousand dollars, you get a hotel room. So you can have two people, four people, sometimes six people in the room. So the room itself is a thousand dollars. You can split it however. And with that thousand dollars for seven nights, that's so a great deal for Fort Lauderdale. You get a night of karaoke, a night of trivia, and a comedy night with me. And then for an extra two hundred dollars per person, we're doing. Uh, you get your training course and up to four oh, wow. dives uh, with that me. Sounds like fun. Yeah. So yeah, July eighth through the fifteenth. Uh, you know, email comedian Tanya Lee Davis at Gmail or look on the flyer and give Skip a call. Yeah, if you're trying to cross stuff off the bucket list, and there you go. That's right? the one way to do it. You get comedy show with Tanya Lee and scuba diving. Uh, what about skydiving? Have you ever done that? That was the number one thing on my bucket list, and uh, we filmed the Unstoppable Me documentary in late twenty. 22 and that was we were trying to arrange that and then i was told medically that i that oh, my can't. body's in bad shape that the force of getting pulled oh, up yeah. could be detrimental even if you was like tandem with oh somebody. yeah no i'd have to be because i'm only yeah. 75 pounds eight you know 80 pounds so um yeah no i i figure if i'm gonna die why not be strapped to a man's crotch <laughs> <laughs> oh, well. that's one way to go yeah. out right <laughs> either on stage or doing that i'm okay with yeah. that so so you said you're only 75 or 80 pounds so i just i picked uh, Tanya Lee up for the first time. I've never picked a dwarf up, yeah. so this was new to me. And she yeah. was like, you ever done this? And I was like, not at all. So she put me through a quick crash course. How to pick up a dwarf 101. And it's not really, it's nothing to it. Well, honestly. the thing is, is most people go, because I'm so small, they think I'm light. Yeah. And so I, uh, up until three years ago, when I got my head straight, uh, I weighed 100 pounds. And like, so I was chunky, stocky with the gen red hair. Any videos you see me with the red hair? Anywho, um, so people go, no, no, I'll pick you. I'm, like, I'm heavy, I'm heavy. No, no, I'll pick you. And then they go to pick, oh, you're heavy. I'm like, mm, <laughs> asshole. You know, like, but said 20, I've lost 20 to 
125 pounds. That's awesome. So that's significant. What, what, so, what, what did you do to do that? Well, Kevin and I moved, my husband, uh, we moved from England. Uh, well, the lockdown happened. Oh, so yeah. that I knew I would probably put on weight. So I, that's when I started doing dance videos on Facebook. Oh. And I was doing video diaries on YouTube and stuff just through the lockdown trying to inspire and motivate people. So I thought, I know because I'm not going to be able to perform that my mental health, you know, was gonna, I was going to get depressed because I'm like that if I can't be on stage. Yeah. And then to be locked down in England where, you know, it's a miserable place to be if you haven't, if it's, there's not a global pandemic. So now to be locked in. Um, I could not imagine. Yeah. So that was four months. So I started doing like I would put on an 80s song, like let's get physical. So I put like my underwear over my tights and I put a bandana and let's get physical. <laughs> you know, so I put those videos out there. I'm like, come on, everybody. It doesn't matter if you've got mobility issues. Move your eyeballs, you know, yeah. like just get those endorphins going, the happy yeah. hormones, because any physical activity you do is going to release a happy chemical that we have in our bodies. Right. So that's what help. Uh, I was trying to help people well i kept getting copyright infringements because of oh. the songs so my uh, friend in the uk comedian mel moon suggested i try the tiki talk and uh so i downloaded it oh, of course no idea what i was doing and i did a couple videos she uh duetted them and it, it i garnished quite a, a, a number of following and then i put it down then we moved to uh, Florida because mm -hmm. we had nowhere to go. My dad, my, so my husband and I moved in with my dad, my stepmom in Florida. And that's, uh, so it was the following August of 2020 when I did my first sort of viral video. And then October 1st, I had a hundred and, I think it was October 1st is when I started going live, like religiously. And I had about 126,000 followers. And of course, everybody was like, when are you going to get married? Because Kevin would be off fishing during the day when I would go live. <laughs> then I would take Live in the dream. Yeah, yeah, we needed it. And then I, you know, I'd be doing my videos and doing live. And then he would come back having a after having a couple beers and fishing and then he gets a little chatty in the background occasionally he'd like to be seen so i had the camera people were like when are you getting married when are you getting married and i was like ah oh, when we hit a million followers because oh, i didn't know anything about social media yeah we hit a million followers december 15th <laughs> like two months later i was like oh crap now i gotta get married <laughs> so anyway we got married um in fort pierce florida at pierced cider works that's awesome and my friend's bar and we streamed it on february oh, 21st cool. of yeah. 2021 one we streamed it on clapper and tiktok and facebook and so we had thousands of people watching us get married and it was beautiful so what are you up to now on uh tiktok uh three i've been sitting at 3.2 million for probably a year That's now amazing. i just can't i can't get past it but yeah i mean for yeah. someone well my thing is we have a ton of people that watch the show and like what can i do you know to to start social media to grow followers but at your age though for you to have that amount of followers and and daily actively posting and commenting and going live and telling stories that's amazing that yeah. you just pick that up and start doing it because there's a lot of people your age that's like what is this contraption yeah. you know i know i do feel like a dinosaur but i think i've i've sort of got my rhythm yeah you know um i, I usually have a bunch of videos in the bank kind of thing in the vault drafts, that's good. but that's the way I, to do it yeah but i don't so I gotta, I gotta get back on it but i've had a lot going on lots of great things happening um so but i yeah and i also i also think a lot of my following, uh, you know, I try to be as authentic as possible. Yeah. And, you know, I don't take myself seriously. I have a great sense of humor. So I'm going to do my dance videos and I'm going to be goofy and I'm going to rock it out and try to do the moves that they're doing. But, uh, you know, obviously it's going to look ridiculous, you know, uh, but I don't care. That's that's how I originally found you was uh, the dancing videos. And I was like, this woman is hysterical. <laughs> so I started watching, watching. And, you know, I've because you've been on there for a couple of years now. Yeah, it's been just over three, um, three years. And, you know, back when we started is when I noticed you. And I'm like, this girl's a hoot, you know. And uh, that's whenever I started the podcast, you kept popping up on my For You page. And I was like, I got to get her on the podcast, <laughs> you know. So yeah. I appreciate you uh, even whenever you message people on Instagram with business accounts, it's like one of those things. It's like, are they going to accept it or not? You know? So, um, I message so many people and luckily select few, uh, reply back and they're like, they probably look at the picture and like, who is this guy? It says Whitney Lawson and it's Daniel, you know? Yeah, so, yeah. so there's a picture of both of us on there, but so you have all the, all the platforms, what all platforms do you run? 
Uh, oh, well, not as many. I guess I should. So, uh, obviously, TikTok's my biggest one. Facebook. Unfortunately, my Facebook's been not recommended anymore. So, it's been plateaued for 15 months now. I've got to figure out how to get that recommended again. Um, so, I'm doing well done well on that. Uh, Instagram is comedian Tanya Lee Davis. Everything else is Tanya Lee Davis. YouTube, Tanya Lee Davis. Like Clapper. I was going on Clapper. Uh, it's a adult. I call it the adult version of TikTok. So, I during the lockdown, and every, starting January of 2021, every night at 10 p.m. till midnight, I was going on. So I was doing two to six hours a day oh, wow. between TikTok, Facebook, and Clapper. And it was only literally until this December that I've kind of not been able to do my 10 o'clock lives. So I was doing, a, but it's just my life is getting very hectic and I have to prioritize. Yeah. And I feel so guilty because I have, I, I took the best of the best from TikTok and Facebook because you know how, or, sorry, yeah, TikTok and Facebook, you know how like TikTok can do that. Yeah. Well, I was in the basement. So I was like, all right, we're going to another app. So I brought hundreds of people over to Clapper. And so at 10 o'clock, it, I'd be in my jammies, Kevin and I would do some edibles or something. We'd just sit there and giggle. And, you know, it was our, our late night family cookout. Right. And I didn't have to watch my language. And it was a lot more personable. And my Clapper family and my fans are a little bit more, you know, close to me than than some of the other fans because, yeah, we just had that kinship. And unfortunately, I've had to step back a little bit from that. But it's just... I have, you know, it's, I have to prioritize. Yeah. I mean, you have things popping up right now that yeah. are, you know, that that's a dream for you and you got to jump on it. You yeah. know what I mean? You don't want to miss the bus whenever yeah. it's parked right out front. You right. know what I mean? Yeah. And it, but it's, and I'm sure they understand. Well, yes, uh, some do. And some, do, you know, you'll get, you're going to get chastised no yeah. matter what. Right. And it's just like, you know, people feel when you have a profile that you owe them something yeah. and I, you know, we as creators have to set boundaries as well. And I go, well, listen, I give a lot more than a lot of people yeah, and I don't have to, cause I don't make a lot of money on this. I'm here cause I want to be. So when I need to take a step back or I've got things going on, you have to respect you that. Respect I will it. give you what I can yeah. uh, when I can, because yeah. I do value my support system. Cause I wouldn't be where I am without the people, my fans and what I've accomplished personally. I agree. Uh, as far as information or suggestions for people that want to start social media. What was the one thing that you did that kind of helped you grow your following to someone who's never done anything like that before? Like, what do you suggest that they do to even get started? Well, I mean, you got to figure out what, you know, what angle you want to go to. Are you, are you a person that just wants to do dance videos? Are you a person that wants to engage and you want to, you know, you want to grab their attention and, and, you know, uh, you know, do you have a story to tell? Mm. You know, if you look, there's so many people have recovery stories and, you know, there's a whole base of TikTok where it's about inspiring other people and giving that support system or there's the comedy or, you know, filters or the animated eyes or whatever those types of things. You got to figure out you know, where you want to go with that. Um, and then dive in and don't, you know, don't worry about the, 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 the negative comments because the algorithms don't know whether the pause uh, the comments are positive or negative. Yeah. This is the way I, uh, I see social media. And I tell my, my fans, my people is listen, especially as your following grows, there's going to be negative comments. So the best thing we all want engagement. That's what social media is. It's all about engagement. Amen. Right? So, if somebody makes a comment on your social media, the algorithm doesn't know if it's positive or negative, right? So the best thing you can do is put a little heart, right? Put the heart beside it. Doesn't matter if it's negative or positive. Put the little heart. And then you reply, because that's good for the algorithm. Thank you for the engagement. Yeah. Right? Because... It doesn't matter whether it's negative or positive. Thank you for the engagement because the trolls are not smart enough to realize exactly. that they're actually pushing your content. You're helping me. Yeah. You're like, I don't think you're funny. <laughs> yeah, but you know what? Now more people are going to see my video yeah. because you just commented. So yeah. at the end of the day, you win. So if you just keep that in mind, you know, and just like I said, follow what makes you tick, what makes you laugh, what makes you, you know, anything like that. Just follow that and your tribe, your people will find you. Mm -hmm. Just be authentic. What is the thing that you've overcome the most? Like, what is that one thing that you're just extremely proud of yourself about for achieving 
um, being at your age now, how old are you? 53? I just turned 53. 53. Yeah. So you've got 53 years to look back on. What is the one thing that you're like, I'm so glad that I've achieved this goal? Well, I have my name and my photograph on the world famous comedy store on Sunset Boulevard really? in Hollywood, California. That's with some amazing. of the greatest comedians in the world. That's awesome. So when people say, Oh, I don't think you're funny, that's okay. You can't take my name off the wall. Yeah. I'm on with Dave Chappelle and Lenny Bruce and Robin Williams, my that's awesome. idol, George Carlin. I mean, wow. And my name's alongside because Mitzi Shore, Polly Shore's mom, who is the queen, the mother of comedy, she Past me. That's a rite of passage in the comedy world. She deemed me worthy uh, to become a comedy store regular. And I got passed the same day as Ralphie May. I'm not sure if you know I, I know comedian Ralph, yeah, Ralphie May, yeah. who's unfortunately not with us anymore. But talk about extremes. You got the, the little person midget yeah. and then the ginormous 400, right. 500 pound dude. And we were good friends. And uh, so. When you did know, that? When did you. Get uh, that 1999, 1998 is when I got passed. Wow. Yeah, same year. Yeah, and uh, so, yeah, that, that, and then doing TED Talks, doing yeah. two TED Talks. Um, you know, you have to be invited to do TED Talks. I'd always wanted to, and then I got offers two in like within a couple of months. Now, where is that at? Where uh, did you well, do that? They, they do universities all over the world will oh, curate wow. a TED Talk. So, what they do is they kind of come up with a theme, and then they'll scour the world and find people that might fit that theme to come in and talk. The crazy thing is, is you know, as a, a comedian and stuff like that, uh, I didn't realize when they hold these events. Okay, so first of all, I, I, I landed one in Cyprus. That was November 30th. Well, then months later, I landed one in Liverpool, but it was going to, I was going to do it before uh, early November of that year. So the Cyprus one was still later. So I did the one in Liverpool. I talked about the trains because I have a mobility scooter. That's how I get around. It allows me to be independent. Living in the UK, the scooter's not considered a wheelchair. Mm. So, and the public transportation over there is a nightmare. So if you want to go down the rabbit hole of Tanya Lee Davison trains, oof, uh, but I'm an unstoppable me. I'm back from the ashes. Uh, Phoenix uh, rising from the ashes. So I talked about all my drama on the trains for that one. You're only allowed 15 minutes. And as you can see, I can talk. So I, when you watch the TED Talk from Liverpool, I'm quite rushed. And, you know, I had a lot to say and I wanted to get it out there. Oh, that one was okay. But the way I looked at it was like, you know what? I'm so lucky because that was almost like a dress rehearsal. Mm. So my husband and I got flown to Cyprus, beautiful island, right? We're doing the University of Nicosia. So they have three sections in the show and they have speakers. And when I showed up, um, I gave them a USB with some photos and they kind of looked at me like, okay, you're a comedian. Why would you be giving us photos? See, in my mind, I was going in to do a Ted talk. Right. I was going to talk and I was going to show, sli show slides. I didn't realize that during these events, they will have speakers that do proper Ted talks, but then they'll also put in a performer to do like entertainment in each section. So the first section had somebody playing piano and da 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 da. So essentially I was they hired me or whatever and they you don't get paid, but they flew me out there to to be like the entertainment section. Uh, for that section. So they thought I was just doing straight stand up. And when I realized this, I was like, Oh, shoot, because we did a dress rehearsal the night before. Wow. And I was like, Oh, I got to put in more jokes. And they were like, you, you can still do the slides and everything. Anyway, um, we got there, uh, not at the beginning of the day, because I was later on in the afternoon, but I got to watch the sections. And that's when I realized I was like, Oh, wow, the, I completely had this all wrong. Anyway, I'm like, No, I, I this is what I want to do. This is the type of comedy TED talk I want to do. So I was like, said to Kevin, I'm just going to do what I planned on doing. I punched it up a little bit. Out of whatever the nine people, there was two people that got standing ovations and I got one of them. That's awesome. They had, they did not expect what they got from me because they thought it was just going to be comedy. But I kind of did a version of the unstoppable me was showing the slides of my life and yeah. my stick and me on my scooter traveling around the world. And it was that empowering, you know, don't let your size or whatever define who you are. And I'm super proud of that Ted talk. And it was so well, well received. I had 500 people on their feet, awesome. people from 
all over the world were there. It was, yeah, that was, it was, and my husband was there, and it was just right after my birthday. So he, who is like, does not like to be in front of people or anything, he walked out with a birthday cake and the whole place sang happy birthday to me. Like the event people set it all up. It was so lovely. So, yeah, that I would say is up there with one of the tops. You've accomplished a lot. Um, and it's crazy and, and more to come, right? Like absolutely. <laughs> well, we have the unstoppable me documentary. Yeah. It, so what is that message? Like I've heard you say unstoppable yeah. me throughout the podcast, but what is your main goal with, with the unstoppable me? Well, once again, it's my legacy. So uh, a film crew from the UK, a former, well, a comedian friend of mine and director now, now director, uh, contacted me, said, I'd like to do a documentary on your life as a comedian. And then, of course, you know, you got to have a different type of storyline. Well, when I told them what I was doing on social media with my Unstoppable Me message, trying to put it out there to empower people, inspire them, you know, using my... Uh, life story as examples yeah. he was like i'm on it so that's so they flew over we we kind of uh, we got to schedule up to uh, uh pottstown pennsylvania and back down and we stopped at a couple of places along the way and met up with some of my fans and some other comedians so you know my buddy shelly belly who i met on tiktok who, who you know hasn't been doing comedy that long but she's my age so she also is a storyteller her and i were touring together and now she's like kind of once again kind of almost like surpassing me because wow. her following is really on board She's great. She's in the documentary. I have Rose Vineshank, who's a comedian up in Pennsylvania that I sort of mentor. And then our, I had my OG fans, Ron and Arnold from Ohio, uh, that drove all the way from Ohio to Pottstown, Pennsylvania, to be part of the documentary. And my little That's clapper awesome. group, a bunch of them came out. So, it, you know, just it's it's. We've actually added parts of, of uh, the initial video when I was in the UK, the, sort of the video that became viral when I got uh, forcibly, if you will, removed from the train, me and my scooter to accommodate a woman with a baby stroller. And that whole interaction, by the time I got home six hours later, I was beat down and broken. Oh, I guarantee it. So I sat in my bedroom with my iPad, just my face bawling, talking about, you know, how the, how the UK has made me feel disabled. And it was almost like that moment was so like, you, you've broken me. Mm-hmm. You guys, like, I've never had a victim mentality until I moved to the UK. And, and it, it's so prevalent around there and their bullying culture is, is, is so intense and I don't think they realize it um, but all the more reason why I'm excited to come back I'm doing a 23 city tour in the UK because my message they need it I mean it's needed everywhere but my people in the UK oh you need it because um, I don't know what it is about that uh, their their culture but it uh, yeah you're going to show up and show out. I, I know that. I am, baby. I'm bringing it home. And I'm going to, you know, I'm probably going to break down crying on stage. That's talking, okay. I talking mean, that's about good. the, you know, the train stuff because it's still, you know, um, but I don't have that victim mentality. And the right. fact is I am the way I am right now today because of that. Yep. So I wouldn't change it. This is why people need to look. Don't revel. Don't don't live in the, being depressed is, is living in the past. When yeah. you're depressed, you're focusing on stuff that's already happened. You can't change it. It's already done. The best thing you can do is go all right i learned something i'm better because of it da, 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 and now live for today yeah you know people have anxiety they're worried about what's going to happen in the future what's going to happen i can't control it well we can't control what's going to happen in five minutes exactly so take a step back focus on what you can control right now and those are the things that people need to focus on but we're being pulled in so many different directions yeah. right now and our young people haven't been able to get outside of themselves to see when you're older you can see back in right when you're young you just you only have limited scope on right. things and so therefore you're just going well this is what i think i'm doing at the time the right thing i think i'm doing at the time you might fall on your face but then when 10 15 years later when you look back you're like okay i understand why i fell on my face now i, f- and I feel like that's true like a lot of kids and younger people <clears throat> part of my voice i'm still trying to get over whatever the funk i got that's what i've been telling people whatever the funk i got you know yeah. <laughs> but uh <clears throat> a lot of the younger people i feel like look ahead you know and, and they're so dialed in ahead and whatever happens happens they'll deal with it as they come but it's when they do get older, they kind of turn back around and was like, I was a little shit back then or whatever. Mm-hmm. Or, you know, this did happen. Maybe I could have done it a little differently or uh, I don't know what it is, but maybe it is what you said. You know, you, you get a little bit more mature 
you know, as you age and you yeah. look back and say, man, I should have done that or I'm a change now or, you know what well, I mean? Well, yeah, and becoming a, a parent as well. Yeah, and true. I myself have only uh, have three stepkids, no vagina trophies of my own. <laughs> but, you know, that's life changing. That yeah. also gives you a, a calendar. My husband calls it the like the life calendar where your, your child's now growing up so that as they're growing up, you're seeing the calendar pages go by faster and your mortality because, you know, you have a literal human being being growing up in front of your very eyes mm -hmm. so you know and you have to protect it and it's your your responsibility now yeah. it's not you're not as self-centered anymore because you have a, a human to take care of so that's what uh children usually does for people and and hopefully from our discussions yeah. you know it kicked you in the butt and also, did, obviously yeah. a good woman in your life and uh but you know that's yeah, it's just life experiences and the good and the bad. And we have to have the bad yeah. in our lives because that's the only, that's why my husband is the best thing for me in the sense that he gives me pushback. Mm -hmm. You know, um, you know when, you, when you're in the entertainment business, people want to blow sunshine up your ass. And, mm -hmm. you know, when you're on social media, I love you, I love you, you're great. So it's easy to get an inflated head. Right, yeah. But then, you know, you turn the cameras off and you got somebody beside you, you know, you're not as great as everybody, you know, like, you know, or whatever, you know, yeah. but it, it keeps you grounded. And that's, exactly. you know, I need that. And then my husband's the best thing for me. And so I know that I, he's the one and only person I can count on. He's got my back. And no matter what anybody says, he's your person and my penguin, he's yeah. my penguin. And whatever the internet decides, they think about a relationship. It's only this three years on social media has only brought us closer together. Oh, yeah because of the you know the chaos that people want to create around us um you were saying uh, about the unstoppable where can they find that documentary oh yes the unstoppable me documentary is now streaming on amazon amazon apple tv Google Play or Pay, whatever it is, iTunes and Vimeo. Awesome. Uh, please write a review, especially on Amazon. If you watch it on any other platforms, write a review on IMDB, Independent Movie Database. Look up Unstoppable Me documentary, write a review. Because the more, you know, the more people share it, it, like I said, it's my legacy. I want to get it out there, you know. My... My body's not doing great. I'm kind of, my body's shutting down. So, I, you know, I don't know how long I got while well, I'm in it till I'm not. But, uh, you know, I, I want this out there. And hopefully it inspires and motivates people to live their best life because you only got one. Exactly. And we'll put that, we'll put the links to those in the description as well. That way they can find that. Just send them to me and then I'll copy and paste them. Excellent. Do all that, that cool stuff. A mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> little bit more and then we'll finish up. Uh, tours coming up. So I was so thankful that Tina Lee made some time for me to, to come down. And uh, I just got back from California. And then she was like, well, let's schedule something soon because I'm headed on, you know, I headed across the sea there. So tell, tell me about your uh, tour coming up. All right. Well, before I leave on my UK tour, so how, how long do you take to edit this? What do you? Uh, uh, it'll be out on Tuesday. So. Oh, gosh. Yeah. Okay. So Tuesday. Uh, so February 2nd, I'm coming to North Ridgeville, Ohio, uh, just south of Cleveland. You can get tickets through Eventbrite, Unstoppable, or Tanya Lee Unstoppable Me through Eventbrite. Uh, then I'll be in Navarre, Florida, February 17th at Stripes Pub and Grill. I'll be in Crestview, Florida at the American Legion, February 18th. Then I'll be at the Sunrise Theater in Fort Pierce, Florida. Florida, February 24th, before I go on my 23 city tour of the United Kingdom and Ireland. Uh, so I have nine days in uh, uh, England, three dates in Ireland, the Irish Republic, which is not part of the UK, and then I have 11 nights straight in Scotland. And in between there, I'm going to go a little trip to Turkey to dry out I'm and sorry. go visit my friend because <laughs> I can't do 23 straight yeah. days. I need a break in between and get some massage. I'm so excited for you. So I'm very yeah, I'm excited too. I like I said, I'm, I'm they they need me over there. Oh yeah, I, th I think everybody needs a little bit of Tanya Lee, in my opinion. Mm. Um, and I'm glad I'm so blessed to to be able to sit down with you for for the time that I have and eat dinner with you last night. Where did we go? It was a uh, uh, oh, we went to like a little Eastern yeah. European. It's a strip mall that doesn't have anything in it. It was so this weird. Little, like uh, insurance company, and then this <clears> little <throat> yeah little babushka place yeah. or whatever, and it's just yeah borscht and pierogies and yeah. Yeah, we had some great I, I don't know what I had, and uh, I, I was like, look, I don't even want to waste my time looking at the menu. Just pick me out something good, and yeah, some, some we shared goulash. some dessert. <gasps> mm, apple pie and baklava. Yes, right? mm, good uh -huh. stuff. 
Um, so good. Um, well, what do you got for me? Anything? Oh, oh I have also have my open bar comedy special coming oh, yeah, out. Yeah. Um, I don't have a specific date on that. We we filmed a podcast in conjunction with the comedy special. So open bar comedy is kind of like dry bar comedy. If you're familiar with dry bar, it's a streaming platform. Dry bar comedy, they all the comedians have to be squeaky clean and very, you know, granola. Uh, rated g material open bar comedy is free speech no oh, okay. bar. same type of platform so they'll put out little chunks we have i think 30 minute comedy specials so uh if you want to see the whole comedy special you subscribe you That's can buy cool. it or you can uh, buy a pers- uh, subscription to the entire open bar comedy and get all the comedians huh. spe- available specials available uh so of course i'll be plugging that when uh, the awesome. special comes out so we got the tour the special the documentary and scuba diving the scuba diving yep and yeah my tour i got tour dates basically until July right now and uh, more to come. So contact your local comedy clubs and request me right now. I'm doing this just word of mouth. So I need, you know, if you like what I do, the three things you need to contact on social media, comedy clubs and say, you're a fan of Tanya Lee Davis. You want to buy tickets and when are they going to book me? Those are the three things. Cause it's funny cause fans will contact a club and the club will be like, well, send me her dates. And it's like, but they're just fans, you know? Just so yeah, just tell them you're a fan. Before we close, I know I keep saying this, but more questions keep popping in my head. But this was a little bit that I saw. There's a couple things you do not do to dwarfs. First of all, don't pat us on the head. It's beneath you, Pete. Uh, And don't pick us up, because I said, I got a big old booty. I'm solid. I can, she's telling the truth. Uh, And number three, no vodka after midnight. (laughs) And why is that? Because we multiply. (laughs) Or we try. (laughs) I love yeah, it. Feel free to get me wet. <laughs> <laughs> well, Tanya Lee, thank you so much for uh, for for spending time with me and and getting on the podcast. And uh, I'm so blessed to be able to you know come down and travel. I don't know how many miles you put on that scooter, but I know there's about a million more to come. And I'm so excited for you. And uh, thank you for coming on the show. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. All right. Awesome lessons. Yeah, that's right, baby. Uh, Anyways, guys, don't forget to uh, give this video a big old thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel. And most importantly, turn on all bell notifications because you just never know who we're going to have on the show. And today it's Tanya Lee Davis. Uh, In the weeks to come, we got some more comedians and some musicians. And I'm so excited. And, um, yeah, so continue to... Listen and tune in and see who all we got on the show. But until next time, stay awesome, stay sweet, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye.